This is Marketing Jam, a show featuring the brightest minds in marketing. Brought to you by Canada Post. Head to canadapost.ca forward slash insight podcast for ideas to add value to your marketing. Hi everyone, I want to welcome you to the next episode of Marketing Jam. I'm so excited. We have Andrew Au here who I uh, spent some time with on a panel recently while he was here in Vancouver. Uh, he is the president uh, of Intercept Group. He's got a ton of insight, a ton of knowledge. Uh, I heard his keynote as well and just full of so many good nuggets. And as well, if you are a subscriber, which I'm sure you are, to Insight Magazine, uh, in the last issue he was uh, had a great article. It was awesome. Uh, and this issue was brilliant in that it's full of incredible articles, like people from Andrew, you know, people from Andrew writing them. Also, it's got incredible case studies, and the cover you actually has a bit of a scratch piece to it, talking about a case study uh, for a male piece uh, in Africa, which is really awesome. So this is the latest edition of Insight. You cannot lose it. It glows in the dark, basically. It's pretty awesome. So make sure you go and subscribe to this. Uh, again, it's a physical magazine that you could have in your agency's office, in your company's office. Uh, my favorite part, of course, I jump right to the case studies and kind of see what ideas that people are doing around the world when it comes to creativity, uh, creative elements, uh, creative direction. Uh, when it comes to mixing digital with postage and just really incredible postage campaigns. So, Andrew, starting off, uh, tell us about your origin story. How did you get to be where you are uh, in with Intercept Group and, and the role yeah, you play? Yeah, so, you know, my journey started, uh, this is year 13 for us. Uh, and so I was, I was moonlighting at the time. So I was working at Pepsi in the uh, the marketing department so uh, core four as they called it back then so pepsi diet seven up diet so i was i was one of the abms that was that was on the brand and so um you know coming out of school you really don't know anything uh so you you get in there and you're like well hey well why don't we try and do this or you know can we try and you know a new technique or a new strategy a new campaign and then you know typically the response i got was well dude that's why we have an agency mm -hmm. and so i was like ah okay uh, what is this whole agency thing about? So that's how I got kind of introduced to the agency model. Um, and then that's where we kind of, we were like, look, I mean, what can we create, um, you know, around technology, around like new markets and millennials? I mean, so when I say we, my wife and I actually started the agency. Um, and so we're like, well, what do we know best? We know our generation. And uh, that was really before we started calling it millennials. It was just young people. And uh, so that's how the journey started. So I started client side, figured out probably on the wrong side. And then uh, I sort of jumped to the agency side and that was, it's been 13 years. Wow, let's talk about that yeah. briefly. Uh, someone who's yeah. maybe a marketing student listening to the show or maybe on one of those sides, how would you best describe the difference between client side marketing and agency side marketing? Man, that's a good question. Um, you know, well, based on my exposure in, in the CPG world, you know, the, the client side is really around, you know, it's managing the, the the brand success, looking at the Nielsen reports, seeing what kind of share numbers you got, seeing where the volume's coming from, what promos are driving that. So it's a lot of the analytics. It's a lot of the the brand strategy, which is which is super interesting. Um, I think the agency side is a lot, is more on the creative side, right? So you're coming up with, ideas and different strategies um, because on the client side you're, you're you're busy managing the brand right you're project managing budgets um, you know internal uh, buy-in on certain on certain campaigns so agency it's a little bit more fluid it's a little bit more um, maybe even I'd say unstructured a little bit more agile mm -hmm. so it's around idea generation versus client side I think is you know managing success and outcomes mm -hmm. would be kind of the, the main distinction. In a perfect world, the relationship between mm. a client and an agency would people would value and uphold each other's roles. Would you say that? Yeah. I, well, yeah, for sure. But I think I think what ends up happening in reality is we get caught in this. Well, it's agency side versus client side, and I think it's such a wrong way to look at it because, mm. you know, if you're a client and you know you you you're, you're being accountable to these outcomes, you've got you know budget X to achieve that within these regions. You got to be super transparent. Because if you start holding cards so close to your chest, well, then the agency starts to think in, with, with these set of parameters and you don't end up with the best outcome, right? I think, I think where we've got a lot of, you know, long-term relationships with, you know, organizations like Microsoft and, and Intuit and FedEx is where we have that, 
you know, very open relationship. Like the, the, the agency should be a natural extension of the client. Mm -hmm. I, th I think we haven't got there yet though. I think there's still a lot of, there's still a lot of trust issues. Um, and, and I think from the client side, it's this perception of like, well, if you just kind of be fully transparent and, mm -hmm. you know, if you commit to something, well, then you get lazy. Yeah. Right. And I think we see that in any kind of personal relationship too. So it's this, how do you how do you stay engaged at the same time? Um, how do you empower success on both sides? I think that's that's the challenge. It's it's all the human stuff. Yeah, yeah, and and the trust side, right? Do you trust each other? Yeah, of course, right? And 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 you know, like I get it. Naturally, you're on two different sides. Agency is trying to, you know, obviously they make their livelihood on the budgets that that the marketers give them. Uh, and you know the marketers need to be successful on the client side to drive impact and success. Otherwise, you know you don't have a job, yeah. or you don't get budget, right? So, yeah. but but they can align. I think I think if it's again, the, both sides are very open and they've got um, they've got trust. Where you know if you if if you burn trust, it's very difficult to rebuild. Mm -hmm. But you got to you got to give that shot. And I think that clients are really scared right now because. I mean, you, you know this too. It's like we budgets are declining. You've got a lot of um, in housing going on to try and combat that. You got a lot of fierce competition, so they're really trying to figure it out. I think I think also on the agency side, we don't give the client side enough credit for that because like they're holding the bag, mm -hmm. right? You you don't hit your numbers, yeah, you're, you're out of a job, right? So a lot of the product marketers, a lot of the the, the business group owners. They, they, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stuff that they do that we don't see. Yeah. So for sure. Yeah. As and, you know, and as intercept group and as uh, when you go into a room with Microsoft and, and these different clients, yeah. what do they see you as? What, what are you kind of niching out as, as an agency? Yeah. So, so for us, it's really around the modern B2B world. And, and it's this, how do we get the customer journey, right? How do we, how do we merge? I always say like sales and marketing together and, you know, we spend an equal amount of time with marketing teams as we do sales teams. And mm -hmm. we got to figure out, okay, well, what marketing campaign is actually going to drive, you know, lead generation, mm -hmm. brand equity, pipeline, mm -hmm. conversion, loyalty, consumption, like actual mm -hmm. more revenue based outcomes. Um, that's, that's really where we're niching is, is in that modern B2B segment. So, Microsoft is an example, you know, yeah. how do we sell more Azure to our customers and how do we get them to use it more? Because ultimately you use it more, you're going to get more, more consumption, more revenue, right? Yeah. Are you excited about Bing ads or is it one, are you more focusing on their kind of office suite and Skype? Yeah, uh, we do, we do less with the, the Microsoft advertising group. Um, it's more so on like office 365 yeah. Azure, like the core sort of product suite. Yeah. And then how does teams is an example. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of orgs are still trying to figure out, well, how do we, how do we work in a modern way? Yeah. Right. I mean, as they go from like on-prem to cloud, how do we, how do we get that right? How do we get the culture right? So, um, but yeah, that's, that's where, that's where we're focused. So there's a conference coming up, QuickBooks, uh, Intuit's QuickBooks is doing a QuickBooks, QuickBooks Connect, Connect in yeah. Toronto. So is that yeah. the idea of being like, hey, we're going to offer these workshops, inspire business owners, and then that's yeah. the chance to let them know about the QuickBooks world? Yeah, so actually, we we produced the first QuickBooks Connect in Canada. Nice, nice. Uh, we, yeah, yeah, QBC Toronto, um, and then Vancouver and Calgary. Yeah, yeah. the um, that that's exactly it, right? It's and, and for for what I think Intuit does so well uh, is they capture the small business segment, mm -hmm. and that's such a hard segment to engage. Yeah. Like, and it's huge too. You get ninety eight percent of all businesses that are mm -hmm. under hundred staff. Um, they, they're the backbone of the economy, but we they're so fragmented. There's yeah. so many different industries. How do you reach them? They're yeah. busy. I think Intuit plays in a really sweet spot, which is we're going to help you be more financially successful, yeah. which that's the top list, right? That's what business owners kind of like keep them up at night. Yeah. Profitability. How do we grow? How do we get more customers? Uh, managing the P&L. So, yeah, that's what it's about. You know, QuickBooks Connect is like bringing people together, learning about new innovation, yeah. thought leadership, workshops, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I'll be there but, in uh, in Toronto. I'll be in your neck of the woods. Oh, that's soon. oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. You should come by and say hi. And where we first met was a Canada Post event. Tell us about that one because it yes. seemed like it was a packed room full of people learning yeah. about. Yeah. You know what's funny about Canada Post is that um, 
they keep growing in terms of the number of attendees. And I find that interesting because most events are actually having the reverse mm-hmm. effect. I mean, they're producing fewer events, they're getting fewer people out, and I see them producing more, they're getting more people. So obviously doing something right. Um, and I think for them, they've really, they've really, I think, got into the thought leadership side of things. It's, you know, look, if for, for targeted solutions, direct mail solutions, even um, leveraging uh, customer intel and purchase data, behavioral stuff, all that, that, you know, they do all that. But they're not like kind of throwing that in your face. It's, it's actually thought leadership content that you care about. I think that that's the reason why they're getting the attendees out there. So, um, yeah, that conference w- was was just that. We had, uh, you know, a, a scientist out there from PwC, I'm, I'm sure you remember, talking about cognitive bias. Um, you know, I was there talking about new technologies and digital transformation. And um, there was uh, also the founder of Inventa that was there talking about live experiences. So what's cool about that is that it's really like this integrated customer journey, right? It wasn't like DM was an element of, of many of it, but it wasn't just a, a, a conference about direct mail. And obviously, obviously your panel as well, right? And what is the future of marketing and and, and, and marketing strategy. So yeah, they're, they're doing something right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we uh, as an agency work a lot with law firms. And so we, we go to the law yeah. firm events, to Loma, LMA. Uh, but yeah. I learned at that event through Smart Mail, you can actually get the address of every law firm and you can even tell Canada Post what size. And then working yeah. with Mailomatic, your, your postage delivery, yeah. you, you don't get that list, but they send it to the mailing house and then you send your piece that you want to send out. And it's a really efficient, very targeted process, um, which again, yeah. to be able to do that uh, with LinkedIn or Facebook, it's, it's a lot more difficult to actually be able to send them something physical. And, and maybe yeah. even like Canada Post is famous, you know, their, their jelly bean cover, you can send them something like <laughs> tangible that you can touch, or, you know, yeah. this is another great example of Insight has the pop uh, top, right? So uh, yeah. those that are just listening, I am holding a bubble wrap covered magazine, and you can maybe just hear that, but it's, uh, it's really creative what can be done in, in postage today with smells and touch yeah. and feel. Well, the stimulating the senses. And I think we need to go beyond the topic of, you know, is it digital or is it physical, right? Like, it, it, it's, it's around blended and it's about taking those senses, stimulating them, and then also adding digital components. Like, I think you made some really good points. I mean, you know, we can stimulate senses there. But what I like about, um, some of the solutions that 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 they've got is that you can target by behavior mm-hmm. like if we know that they're getting certain amazon packages or they're they're, they're, they're getting certain shipments yeah. we get a sense of what they actually do because yeah. it's funny right as marketers we hear this well we saw the data and they said that 50 percent self-report that they would do this if they got this yeah but do they actually do it yeah. i think it's a completely other paradigm that's the that's the that's the real question we want what yeah. do they do yeah. Um, and not just buying, but also I think within the, the, the process of, you know, if I'm going through an email drip journey as an example and I click on something, well, the next step could be digital or physical, right? Yeah. You can send them a DM piece or something afterwards, yeah. or you send them a, a, a an email or an yeah. email as an example. Yeah. So I think is that's the trick right now is like figuring out what's the right mix, right. For, for your brand. And, um, Again, it's. I, I think we're still caught on this, though. Well, shouldn't we throw all our money in digital? Well, great if you can get 50 million impressions yeah. on a population of 30 million people. Yeah. But what, what does it mean for sales? Like, what does that actually mean yeah. for actions? I think that that's 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 the bigger question. And on the B two B side, it's incredible to know, like we you know, Canada Post knows if a business is moving because you we've told them we forward our mail to a new address. Well, yeah, if you don't want to get a, a real CRA call on uh, for your business, you got to update your your info on things, right? So I, I, I think, yeah, I, th- I think it's reliable information. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think there's some interesting things that, that, um, that you can do that maybe don't immediately come to mind when you think of mail, like in that, in, in the Insight Mag that, that's sitting there, um, you know, I wrote an article around account-based marketing. And uh, one of the products that we were promoting for Microsoft was HoloLens, which is this like holographic headset you wear. Um, 
brings holographic computing into your world, all this great stuff. But how do you sell that? Yeah. You know, when I explain that to somebody, they're like, what, what are you talking about? Is it like minority report? Yeah, well, yeah like, kind of a little bit like that, but it's, but it's for work, for your workflows. Well, people don't really get that. So um, one of the accelerator programs that we did where we, we offered companies to actually buy in and mm -hmm. say, you know, you know, buying at X and we'll, we'll send you down to Redmond. We'll, you'll sit down with the engineering team, come up wow. with this, this beautiful hollow one solution. Yada, 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 get you really on the, on, on the road versus just talking about the product. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we looked at the tactics and the attribution mm -hmm. modeling when we did in mail, we did email, we did direct mail, we did a mm -hmm. number of tactics, the direct mail piece that we sent actually had the highest impact. Wow. Um, and that was wow. a, uh, a mail piece that had an embedded video screen in it yeah. and so cool. you open it yeah those are yeah. cool right you open it and you're like oh wow so right there i'm getting them to visualize the solution mm -hmm. um and i'm getting it in their hands and it's something that's a, it's got a little bit of weight to it so it's not yeah. something that maybe you know if you get it you may just toss but or the a may toss this is yeah. something that's got a little bit of weight yeah. like what is this this is a gift oh, yeah. is it right so that i think that's just one example um and it's just i'm, I'm sharing because we know the inner workings of it mm -hmm. but that's an example of how do you use, it's, it's not about the medium, but it's what are you yeah. saying? How yeah. are you using the medium, right? Yeah. We looked into getting those made and it actually was a company in Seattle that, that makes yeah. those. Uh, so we looked at it for higher ed when they were accepted and they're beautiful looking. Like I, uh, you, you flip it open the, you can, and even you can actually have multiple videos within that yeah. piece. It's pretty incredible. Yeah, it's really, it's really, really cool. So I, I think is for the marketers listening to this, it's, you know, how do you, it's, it's not just digital, it's how do you digitally transform your marketing mediums and your marketing strategies? I think yeah. that that's the question. It's not like, let's give all of our money to three software vendors. Yeah. It's think about the journey, you know, what makes yeah. sense for the journey? What makes sense for the customer? Um, I think, I think the smart orgs are, are the ones that are getting that yeah. and they're focusing on that. And I think we live in a time, you, you mentioned it, touched on it, but you know, we get spam calls, we get spam emails. There's oh, so yeah. many uh, digital advertising at us. So when I do get something physical in the mail, like what, uh, it's almost like a, a, a time of rest to be like, oh, I can sit down and read a magazine. I can like physically yeah. touch something. I can look at something. And it almost gives my eyes a break. Cause it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm not yeah, staring yeah. at a screen. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I think uh, I think you're right. I think we're looking a bit for that for that break. Um, I, I think right now we're just we're caught in this. Let's procure every piece of tech that we can, and we we've talked about this before. Um, and so what I tell people and marketers is, like, forget about artificial intelligence, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, forget about AI. Mm -hmm. Think about how do you be culturally intelligent yeah. with how you engage your customers, with how you empower your people. I think that's. You know, those human elements and factors, I think we're forgetting those. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we really are. I think we're trying to figure out, okay, well, how do we deploy the next predictive model? Yeah. Um, you know, first of all, you need the right data to be able to do that. But, but second of all, it's, is that culturally intelligent? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Just well, because and, we can't do it, I don't know if we should do it. And, I, and I'm watching groups like Rogers, uh, you know, telecommunications, they... they yeah. did a series of physical events in their physical stores for small yeah. business owners, giving them small yeah. business tips and training. And I, they were so well attended right across the country. And it was amazing yeah. to see that they're like, hey, you know, we, we spend so much time on our phones and our digital. It's like small business owners just need a physical place to go to, have a little bit of food and actually meet other business owners and get some human interaction. Yeah, I, and, and when we do research around that, and yeah, the Rogers Talk series is great. Um, you know, we ask people, particularly millennial business owners, we say, well, what kind of marketing do you do you like? Like, do you like white papers, webinars, ebooks, whatever? Number one, you know what the number one factor was? Was live experiences. Wow, that's really cool. And, and, and yeah, and because I think it goes back to that, you know, it's it's entertaining, it's engaging, it's experiential. I think just because we have technology, it doesn't mean we don't value those things anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's just well, it's just how we use technology. You know. Well, you look at Social Concierge, a group here in Vancouver, like yeah. the, the Dayton yeah. Cup, the Dinner on Blanc, like they pull off these incredible experiences that, that sell yeah. out every time and it's kind of the, the, the hot ticket to get in, in the city. 
Yeah. Well, and, and I, I use an example to, um, I forget that, uh, what was the ice cream shop called? Um, but when, when charcoal ice cream launched in Toronto, yeah. um, was it sweet Jesus? No, it wasn't. It was, it was another one, okay. but, okay. but, but it was, it was, it was, so it was charcoal ice cream yeah. and people drove an hour. Yeah. Okay. An hour to yeah. get to this shop. Just then so they get the for the gram. Do it for the gram, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know what? An hour there, an hour and a half line. So, yeah. and then and then an hour back. So you think, yeah. but that's three and a half hours yeah. for charcoal freaking ice cream. Yeah. What is convenient about that? Yeah. Absolutely nothing. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's it's fun. It's engaging. Yeah. And people, oh, yeah. of course, doing it for the gram, right? Being one yeah. of the first to have it. Yeah. So that, I think that's, you know, like people like live experiences. I, I'd say the one thing over convenience that people value is delights. Yeah. They love experiences and delights. And I think that's a card we can play. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's just, it's, it, it can be expensive. Yes. Yes. It, and, and yes, very, it's a big investment. It's a big risk. Yeah. But when it works, it, it, it pays off. That's for yeah. Sure. 100%. So tell me about yourself. Are you an iOS or Android guy? I'm an Android guy. And tell me about um, apps that you live every. What are the apps that you can't live without? What are the ones you're on every day? Yeah, it's uh, a good question. Apps on my thinking my home screen. Um, so Audible for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, love Audible. Um, you know, I you know the, the efficiency guy. I love I love reading the books on like 1.5 speed, 1.6. Yeah. Did you do <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell's latest? On Audible, the experience? I, no, I I bought it. I bought it. I haven't oh, done it yet. It's incredible. Is it good? Oh, it's so okay, good. Yeah. A fellow Torontan, which is nice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. No, he's great. I mean, such a such a dynamic thinker. Um, the other one that I have is a meditation app called Mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And so, um, for any entrepreneurs listening, and I've been part of like EO and YPO mm -hmm. before, where we I think we we all suffer from this, and I'm sure you can relate. Is you know you wake up. And you've got a million things in your mind. You're going crazy. Yeah. Um, so I use mindfulness as yeah. uh, that app yeah. every morning. Um, yeah. You know, it's I've, I've got a six minute segment or a twenty minute segment yeah. depending on when my dis my kids decide to wake up. Yes, um, it's, yes, <laughs> one or the other. Yeah, and uh, th so that's key. You know, Spotify for sure. And then I've got yeah. a workout app called Strong yeah. that that I use for just like to track stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my home screen. That's awesome. Oh, that's and exciting. Amazon. And Amazon. Yeah. 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 Oh, dangerous. dangerous very man, dangerous. Way too awesome. easy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I use a, I have one called Pray As You Go. Is that by a little meditation app? It's it's awesome. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I've, Headspace is another really good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I this we never had that like we never had that growing up. Is is these these awesome apps, right? Yeah. And and you look for. Like mindfulness, I think, is such a powerful thing. Yeah. Um, it always felt so a bit hoaxy to me. Yeah. I, w I just wasn't yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, and then I tried it, and it just like mellows me yeah. out. It sets me yeah. on the right path. If I don't do it that morning, people yeah. can tell. Wow. Like, okay. Dude, maybe you haven't done your meditation app today. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Tell me, maybe what what's some of the most um, kind of trends that you're seeing that are coming up? What's something that you're following and you're watching, whether it's a brand or maybe just a trend in general? Yeah. You know, I think in the marketing world, um, well, one of the first trends is in housing. I think, particularly on the media buying side, mm -hmm. anything that's really, I mean. I don't want to say commoditized because I think there's value in really good media agencies. I think they, they certainly prove their value. But um, any of those kind of transactional processes, I think, are getting automated. They're bringing them in-house. Mm -hmm. Though I, I would argue that we're seeing in-housing reverse in a way. Mm -hmm. We're seeing organizations who've been the early adopters in in-housing are actually reversing and going back mm -hmm. to outsourcing. Um, because I think the reality is like, yes, you do it for cost efficiencies and it's a great story internally for the P and L, but there's value in having someone that, un that has a different vantage point that yeah. doesn't live and breathe the, yeah. you know, the company X world yeah. day in and day out. I think you need that. So I think they're starting to see that shift. Um, you know, I, I'd say, I'd say in terms of cross, like uh, team design, we're seeing more cross-functional teams that we're following, like. You know, sales and marketing, I think, are still, there's still a gap. I think we need to close that gap. 
particularly with things like account-based marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, to do that right, you need sales and marketing on the same page. So we're seeing that kind of um, integration. Um, teams are becoming more, more, more cross-functional. Um, a couple of the other ones is, you know, tech, MarTech stacks, man, they're mm -hmm. blowing up. Everyone, like there's a, there's a MarTech tool for everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the trend though that I'm seeing is they're screwing up, is mm -hmm. that they're not integrating together. People are not knowing how to use them. They're not optimized. People are, are spending boatloads of money mm -hmm. on these tools. Um, so I think there's a, there's a need there. There's a, there's a there's a there's a need for professional development and training on that side also as a as a as another key trend. Hmm. Wow, that's those are really great ones. And, and then as for you, um, yeah. kind of like your hopes and your dreams. You have children and kind of hopes and dreams yeah. for your children. What do you think your kids in twenty years? How do you think they'll be marketed to? What do you think is going to happen? Kind of like what's that crazy idea you think in twenty years? What's what's the landscape going to be know, like? It's it's funny um, when I think about my kids and and I think about the way they consume content. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell you a quick story. So I was I, I took the kids on vacation. Uh, this was last year, and uh, you know they have seen cable TV mm -hmm. before, um, but we don't really watch a whole lot of cable TV. So we're in Mexico. Mm -hmm. We're in this hotel room. We've got you know a standard cable TV going mm -hmm. on, and so my son and daughter like. Um, all I hear is them going, skip ad, <laughs> skip ad. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? So I'm looking over them. I'm like, what are you guys doing? What are you, what are you watching? And they're like, they're, they're, it's not listening to us. I said, what do you mean it's not listening to you? We're seeing skip ad. And it was just this funny moment that they, they live in the YouTube world, right? Yeah. So, and they were so confused as to why the cable television programming wasn't skipping ads. So, you know, I, I think the expectations a lot higher. I think everything's going to be hyper personalized. I think that, you know, we've been saying that for a while, but wh where I think we're going, when you think like 5G, um, what that's going to do is really allow us to do real immersive experiences that are hyper personalized, that are culturally relevant, that are timely. Um, because it gives that compute power to yeah. like right where you are. And I yeah. think the reason why we don't see that today in retail and other places is not because we can't is not because we can't think about it. Yeah. It's that when you think about a grocery store and they are processing payments, okay, constantly, they are looking at inventory, their mm -hmm. their their bandwidth there's only so much. You want to add some immersive experience where you go down an aisle and something's calling out to you with a personalized offer. They don't have the compute pattern to, to, to yeah. do it. Yeah. So I think that um, with 5G, the, it's going to unlock this whole new world of like truly immersive experiences. I think that's going to be like the norm for these guys. Um, it's scary though, right? Like you, 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 you just, like I said before, just cause you can do it. Yeah. Should you do it? Yeah. Right. And, um, it makes me think of one other story and it just re really quick, um, you know, it, it happened at target, the, the retail store and, uh, they've got something called a, a pregnancy score. So mm -hmm. if you start going online oh. and buying like unscented lotions and certain vitamins or whatever, they think, okay, you're probably expecting. So, um, the 16 year old goes online, starts, buying all the showing all the signs she gets grouped in this expecting category well sure enough she gets a dm that's sent to her home that had a coupon for baby clothes and cribs and stuff and uh she didn't get it though her dad opened it and her dad lost his mind so he goes down to the target store he's like what are you doing why are you sending my daughter this stuff you're trying to encourage my my daughter to become a mom she's 16. And um, obviously the store has no idea. It's yeah. done by, by Corp. Uh, but it turns out she actually was pregnant. Wow. So, okay, wow. is that compliant? Yeah. Is yeah. it accurate? Yeah. Is it, is it creepy? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think when you figure, is it right? Yeah. You know, so I think, I think that's, that's where we, we start talking a lot about ethics when we think about yeah. AI and we talk about yeah. prediction engines. And it's yeah. important because just because you can do it, yeah. Doesn't mean you should, not for yeah. moral reasons, but also if you do it and it's it's culturally 
dumb? Yeah. Well, how do you think the customer is going to respond? You think she bought a crib from Target? Yeah. No. Um, but again, no knock on Target, but it's mm -hmm. just a matter of, you know, we get excited about these tools yeah. and we're making these kinds of mistakes. And I think it's good because it's bringing up the conversation. Should we do it? Yeah, it's much like we have uh, divorce lawyers where we uh, have learned the hard way not to run retargeting ads for that type of law because the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. the spouse, the current spouse, will sometimes go on that person's laptop or phone and discover all these retargeting oh. ads. And, uh, exactly right. Yeah. You got you, you got to be culturally intelligent with that too. Yeah, you're right. That's a that's a good example. That's a good and uh, yeah, I think emotional intelligence will kind of be the I think a future asset that we'll be looking for. And I think events. I, I love your take on events and the power of events. And I think thanks to Canada Post for introducing us through an yeah. event and at an event we sat together. Yeah. And um, don't forget to subscribe to Insight Magazine. You get great articles from people like Andrew with some great insight and and some amazing case studies. Uh, it gets mailed to your uh, office uh, physically in the mail. You can touch it. You can feel it. Uh, and yeah, every issue has a different cover, a different look, a different feel, whether it's jelly beans or bubble wrap or whatever it is. So uh, thank you, Andrew, for coming on the show. We're so yeah, excited for, having me. Uh, for to see what's coming out next and to follow you and uh, your agency and what you guys are up to. And I think Microsoft will be happy. Uh, we are recording on Skype. And we previously had both Bing, <laughs> yeah, uh, Bing and LinkedIn have both been on the show, and they uh, both have had oh, some nice. incredible uh, things to share. So if you haven't watched those two episodes yet, make sure you go back to the archives and you can hear insights from both Bing and LinkedIn. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for joining us today on Marketing Jam, and we'll see you next week.